Coming up on this week in Torrance, an interactive exhibit is here and it's sure to make your mouth water. We'll tell you how you can get access. Then if you own citrus trees, there's a new warning out you'll want to know about. Plus, the city of Torrance steps up to become a host site for a much needed blood drive. And we'll tell you about a new coffee spot that is brewing much more than just drinks. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jin Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. A project by the Cal Water Service will soon be affecting a busy thoroughfare. It's part of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Water Reliability Project. The week of June 24th, crews will start work on Crenshaw Boulevard to install seven miles of a new drinking water pipeline and a new pump station to help ensure all Peninsula residents have safe, reliable water service. Crews will start at Crest Road and move towards the new pump station site north of Silver Spur Road. They will first survey and stage equipment, expect traffic delays during work hours from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Traffic will be reduced to one lane in each direction during that time. Officials are urging drivers to follow the law when traveling through construction zones. Officials say a dangerous disease could be coming from your backyard. California residents are being urged to avoid transporting citrus tree material while traveling this summer. A deadly citrus tree disease called Huan Long Bing or HLB is spread by a tiny insect. The Asian citrus psyllid feeds on citrus tree leaves and if the bug is transported on citrus tree leaves or stem, it can kill the tree. However, it's not harmful to humans or animals. Right now, more than 1,000 square miles within Southern California are in an HLV quarantine. If citrus tree owners choose to share homegrown fruit with friends and family within their quarantine area, all leaves must be removed and fruit should be washed before moving it from the property. You can tell if your trees have them if you notice blotchy and yellowing leaves, premature and excessive fruit drop, and inedible fruit. Now to learn more, go to CaliforniaCitrusThreat.org. You may be enjoying the cheaper gas prices, but experts say not to get too comfortable as that's all expected to change for California residents very soon. On July 1st, California's new gas tax kicks in adding, kicks in, adding an additional 5.6 cents per gallon. This will go towards helping the state repair roads and infrastructure. It's projected to generate more than $50 billion over the next decade. There was an initiative to repeal the bill. Now, if you know an individual, group, or corporation that is making the arts stronger in the community, you have a chance to acknowledge them. The city's longtime tradition, the Excellence in Arts Awards application, is now open. The awards from the Cultural Arts Commission recognizes people who make outstanding contributions to the arts in the categories of drama and theater arts, visual arts and design, dance, literary arts and music. The Dr. Tom Rishi Arts Education Award and the Katie Geiser Award are also presented. Submissions to nominate a candidate are due by July 27th. You must include the nominee's resume and samples of their work or show how they have been a supporter of the arts in this community. Since 1977, the awards have recognized excellence in arts advancement of the arts as demonstrated by Torrance persons, businesses, or organizations. The Excellence in Arts Committee reviews all the submissions and makes a recommendation to the Cultural Arts Commission on who should receive the awards. Now, to get the form, go to torrenceca.gov. The Torch Fire Department is spreading awareness about the dangers of their jobs. June is post-traumatic stress injury month. In their recent Facebook post, they said if this type of stress is left unaddressed, it can lead to harmful behaviors and even suicide among firefighters. They provided a working social media toolkit that will be updated throughout the month to help get the conversation started. The goal is to break the stigma for the future of the fire service. It's a reality that firefighters answer calls that can have lasting effects on even the strongest individuals. According to national research, roughly one in five firefighters in the United States and Canada suffer from a treatable post-traumatic stress injury. To learn more, go to healingourown.org. 
The Torrance South Bay YMCA is looking for local families to host some visitors. YMCA staff and youth from Nagoya, Japan are visiting the Torrance South Bay YMCA in July. Local officials say they are looking for families to host the visitors in their home for six days and five nights. This is the first time in five years since they are coming back to the United States. They will learn about the American culture, visit local places, and attend resident camp. The partnership evolved since the Los Angeles YMCA became sister cities with Nagoya, Japan. Now, if you are interested in hosting, you can contact Sharon Drovka at 310-602-4884. Well, still ahead, local Honda employees give back to the community as they celebrate a big milestone. Plus, the city of Torrance makes an effort to help the blood shortage crisis by hosting a donation drive. We'll tell you how you can help as well. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Is she gonna get it, Daddy? She'll get it. Get it. Get it. When you bring home a Goodwill find, you give your whole town a reason to celebrate because you're also funding local job training and placement programs in tech, healthcare, and more. Goodwill. Bring good home. The City of Torrance hosted its annual blood drive recently at the Ken Miller Recreation Center as city employees came in droves to roll up their sleeves and help. We have sponsors that, that will, are willing to partner with us. Um, companies, cities, fire stations, police departments, and what they'll do is they'll host a blood drive for us. It's very important that they help us because otherwise we couldn't do it on our own. <laughs> More than 50 city employees came out in just six hours to help with the blood shortage crisis. The American Red Cross says they are in critical need for type O blood donations and urges individuals to donate in order to ensure a sufficient blood supply for patients in need. We're always in, in need of type O because there's always such a great need for blood. Uh, I don't think people realize the need that the only way that we can um, get the blood is through donors, kindness of donors, taking time to um, volunteer their time and their blood. According to the Red Cross, there are currently just six units of type O blood available for every 100,000 people, and unfortunately that's not enough. They say at least two times that amount is needed every day. While type O negative is a universal blood type, everyone is urged to donate in order to help patients who depend on life-saving blood products. The process of donating blood takes about 15 to 20 minutes, donors are asked to fill out a questionnaire to ensure they are eligible. Donors must be in good health and feeling well the day of the donation. They must weigh at least 110 pounds and have not donated in the last 56 days. 52 units of life-saving blood were collected, surpassing the original goal of 46 units. In case you missed the blood drive, you can schedule an appointment to donate at any one of the many Red Cross blood donation centers, including the one in Torrance. Visit redcrossblood.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Employees from the North American Honda headquarters in Torrance rolled up their sleeves as well and headed to the Madrona Marsh to give back. In honor of American Honda's 60th anniversary in the United States, more than 25,000 volunteers across the country participated in hundreds of projects across 42 states. Here in Torrance, 86 volunteers came out for a restoration project at the Marsh. It was part of the fourth annual Team Honda Week of Service. So here in Torrance, uh, we're uh, helping with uh, remove non-native plants uh, from the Madrona Marsh. It's a, a great institution here in Torrance. So it's a way for us as a company and for our associates to give back to the communities where we work and live because that's very important to us. We get to help the environment and we get to see new cool animals and plants. 
The Team Honda week of service continues to grow from when it started in 2016 when 425 activities were conducted across only 41 states. Now, in the past three years, volunteers have provided assistance through a variety of outreach events, including food drives, blood drives, adopt-a-pet events, home repair projects, providing meals to homeless shelters, among many other service activities. One of the best parts of my job is really seeing um, volunteers come here and the smiles that I saw today, especially from the families and the little kids asking about frogs and insects and birds, um, really brings so much joy to me as the manager and to the staff. To find out more on ways to volunteer at the Madrona Marsh, visit friendsofmadronamarsh.com or call 310-782-3989. A one-of-a-kind space is giving people a chance to take a picture with some of their favorite food that is larger than themselves. Torrance City Cable reporter Hiba Samad has the story. It's all about having a fun time and taking that picture-perfect snap for social media. It kind of came out of uh, whenever we go out for dinner, there's at least one person that says, wait, let me take a pic first. A lot of times it's me, but a lot of my friends do that as well. So we kind of had this idea of creating a space where you're not afraid and not embarrassed to take pictures of your food. The Foodie Space Pop-Up Museum is now located at the outdoor village of Delamo Fashion Center. The former Z Gallery space was converted just for this exhibit. Created by local artists, you can interact with 15 life-size food items, from getting married at the Fry's Chapel to picking up sushi with some glamorous chopsticks, all while taking that Instagram-worthy picture. Since all the pieces are movable, you can build your own space within a space. Uh, you can move a chicken leg to like a caviar pool. Delamo marks its second pop-up museum. The space is 10,000 square feet and there's no time limit on how long you can hang out. Co-owner Eugene Ragoscati says the artist created the exhibit all by hand and everywhere you turn there are details you won't want to miss. The artist chose the food they wanted to work with. Um, so, for example, Trin Mai, she's a Vietnamese-American artist, so she wanted to make something that was close to home. So the pho exhibit, it's a pho that her grandma would make, and tea was, uh, symbolizes kind of everything being okay. Here at the foodie space, there are many popular exhibits, but one of them is this caviar tin that's filled with more than five thousand plastic balls but that's not it this life-size pepperoni pizza is 10 feet in diameter but that's not the largest one there's a 12 foot tall takeout box Brianna Broyles drove from Palm Springs to indulge in the one-of-a-kind experience. We want to have a foodie day, and so luckily my best friend Rachel found this museum that was a pop-up uh, here in L.A., and it was just right in the area we wanted to be, and it looks super cute, and I love Instagram. So far it's been a lot of fun, and there's a lot of help to take pictures, which is helpful because there's only three of us, and we all want to be in it and do interactive stuff. This exhibit is one of many new activities available to mall goers. We're really just gearing uh, the mall towards a social um, experiential um, activation you know we we do these little pop-ups to create new energy and bring you know new people to the mall that have not been um, in the mall environment. Yates says bringing more options to customers is allowing the mall to use the space they have in different ways. We're really excited about the activation the art, the inspiration behind this whole thing is so amazing and so cool. Um, you really have to come out, you know, the whole FOMO marketing thing is, is live and in action because this is only here for like a couple months and then it's gone. For Torrent City Cable, I'm Hiba Samad. Thanks, Hiba. The exhibit is open through July 14th. Right now you can get 15% off for a limited time with the code FOODIESUMMER. For tickets, head to the foodiespace.com. Well, next time you're at the Delamo Fashion Center, you may want to play detective. Thanks to a new escape room available at the mall, Back in Time is open at the lower level between J.C. Penney and Joanne's Fabrics. The private agency has escape rooms with the purpose of altering history, solving mysteries, and recovering treasures. They have developed portals that allow agents to travel back in time. The portals are only active for 60 minutes, and you and your team will have that much of a window to complete your given mission and return before you become a permanent part of history. At the Torrance location, you can book the story of the legend of Billy the Kid. You can head, back, head to backintimeescaperooms.com for more information. 
A new business in downtown Torrance is offering upscale coffee drink choices along with some great food. Clutch and Coffee is serving customers in downtown Torrance. In the former location of Buffy's, owner Gordon Sutter says he was born and raised in Torrance and wanted to bring great food and coffee to customers. Clutch and Coffee is open for breakfast and lunch. The business already has three pages of rave reviews on Yelp. On the menu, you'll find breakfast plates with choices such as biscuits and gravy, loaded breakfast potatoes, brioche breakfast sandwich, along with the classic buttermilk pancakes with house-made syrup and whipped butter. Clutch and Coffee is located on Prado Avenue near Sartori Avenue. North High School celebrates the grand opening of the Performing Arts Center recently. Torrance City Cable was there to talk with students and staff about the exciting milestone. The night was filled with talented students from dancing on stage to bringing the audience in tune. The brand new Performance Arts Center is a place for students to explore and embrace their talents. Torrance Board of Education members were excited to present the new facility to the community. Donnelly, president of the board, says North High has come a long way. Twelve or so years later, this is a much different place, and it's really the center of this North End community. And the community should be very proud of what North High has become facility-wise. Always had the school spirit, it always had the people here, and now it has the facilities to really carry it out. With the supports and funds for bond measures T and U, Mayor Patrick J. Fury says the community was willing to donate and make this project into a reality. I'm so proud of our community for voting for it and supporting the arts in the city of Torrance. Uh, we are uh, an, an amazing city. We have lots of things and this just adds to it. Every quarter of our city now has a performing arts center. Keiko Clark, the theater and choir teacher at North High, is excited for the facility. She says the students now have a place to call home. This has been great opportunity and experience to watch how the building built up from the the ground to to growing, you know, bigger and then completing it. The building has a contemporary look with a long stage for performers to move freely and seats 503 guests. It also has the newest digital audio and lightning setup. Chris Sheck, principal of North High, believes the theater will open new opportunities for the community. We're also planning this to be a place where local community and theater programs can come, use the facility, and really show off the talent that they have because, as I said, academic and cognitive development is very important, but artistic display and demonstration is equally important. Brian Smith, the band director at North High School, who was part of the design committee, says he is thrilled to see the building finally complete. We've been performing in the gymnasium up to this point, and the acoustics in the gymnasium are not terrific. It's very echoey, it's boomy, and hard to really control sound. So to have a facility where we can um, really have the band program be heard and um, really fine-tune our sound. It's going to be a really great place to use. Two seniors who played for the North High Concert Band were lucky to be the first to perform in the building. It's my last year and I really wanted to get to experience how it felt and you know it's it's a nice feeling to you know have an actual place where we can do our performances and really show the people what we are all about. It was really cool seeing like a new, fresh, like clean building and it was really nice for the people to like enjoy the show that way. I'm Vanessa Martinez for Torrance City Cable. Now if you're interested in finding out about upcoming shows, visit the school's website at northhighschool.org. The Torrance Education Foundation awarded local seniors financial support as they embark on a new chapter of their educational path. 18 scholarships were given to graduating seniors from across the Torrance Unified School District at the recent 2019 scholarship ceremony at Torrance High School. This is an annual event providing financial support through scholarships. It's also one major part of the Torrance Education Foundation's mission. This year they are celebrating its an silver anniversary. The scholarships are sponsored by corporate businesses and memorial funds. 
Continental Development, Surf Management, California Water Service, and many more were sponsors this year. Students at all five high schools have the opportunity to apply. The foundation has been giving these scholarships because it's not only important to us to support students who are about to graduate, but because it's important to our community partners to invest in the lives of students who've come through Torrance schools. So our high school seniors who are graduating are going to go out into the world, get their college education, and then possibly come back to Torrance and work here and live here and raise families here. Our corporate sponsors and our memorial fund um, sponsors care about making sure those kids have every opportunity to succeed. So of course scholarship in, in general it's money. It's going to help me uh, pay for college. But also it'll, it'll alleviate some of the burden that I'm going to have when I go there. So I'll have this whole like mindset of just money just like just bothering in the back of my mind. I can just focus on my studying and also I, it also feels really good to know that I, um, I have support from the people. I um, support from those who believe in me and for what, I'm, what I want to work and how I, do, how I want to contribute to the community. TEF awarded a total of $29,500 in scholarship support this year. The foundation is an independent nonprofit that supports the Torrance Unified School District with resources. The organization raises funds for innovative and effective programs that improve student achievement, increases graduation rates, increases employability, and promotes lifelong learning. Top priorities have been sponsoring teacher training, funding the district-wide expansion, and upgrade of ETUSD. In the past five years, TEF has invested more than $6 million in students' academic success. If you are interested in supporting any of the scholarships or creating one, head to tef4kids.org. The Torrance Education Foundation also made another very special donation recently. At the Board of Education meeting, they presented a check for $382,000 for the last phase of the elementary science labs. The Torrance Education Foundation equipped 17 new dedicated science lab classrooms with one at each elementary school. They provided new tools, devices, study materials, learning aids, and much more. The school district is one of the leaders in the state to provide science labs to elementary school students, and they had to develop their own standards. The Torrance Unified School District serves nearly 24,000 students. And before we go, let's check in with Leslie Robbins on the Sports Desk. Hi, Leslie. What do you have for us? What's up, Jin and Ben? Coming up on the Sports Desk, I'm one-on-one -on -one with Torrance High star pitcher and soon-to-be Elko ball player Neil Feist. The Torrance youth tackle volleyball and basketball. And speaking of b-ball, Torrance native and Toronto Raptors Jeremy Lin is now an NBA champion. Torrance, it's where legends are born. And I will introduce you to the Dodger Dog 2.0. Be sure to watch every day at 4 and 9.30. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks so much, Leslie. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jin Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.